I have a poem I'd love to read to you. See if you can feel some of these words. It's called Love After Love by Derek Walcott. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror and each will smile at each other's welcome and say sit here eat you will love again the stranger who was yourself give wine give bread give back your heart to itself to the stranger who has loved you all your life whom you have ignored for another who knows you by heart Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit. Feast on your life. It's very painful being a stranger. I don't know of anything that can hurt so deeply and linger for so long. There have been times when all of us have felt like a stranger, like nobody really understood us, that nobody really saw who we were. Even when we, even when we meet someone who feels like they know us or maybe somewhat interested in us, the pain of being a stranger may come up. It has a familiar feel and texture to it. It says to us at certain times, you don't know me. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've seen. You don't know what I've lost. You don't understand me. It's painful. I know what that's like to feel like a stranger. It hurts. It hurts to feel that though people think they know you, they only see a part of the story. You know what I mean? Just a part of who you are. A slice. I think this is, this is common. Extremely common. This is true even with close loved ones or relatives, spouses or longtime colleagues. We feel misunderstood or not seen. And every time it happens, it builds upon itself until one day we explode because it gets so unbearable. In our country right now, Many people feel like their neighbors are strangers. They feel cut off from them, spiritually, emotionally, viscerally. How could they have voted that way? <laughs> Don't they care about what is right, what is best for our country? How do I get along with someone I can't even understand? These are some of the big questions we are wrestling with right now. We are wrestling with what it means to live with strangers. We are taught to fear strangers. At least I was. As a kid, I remember hearing, don't talk to strangers. Strangers represent a threat. 
an unknown factor. Strangers can hurt us, so best to avoid them. We don't tend to think through that often the people that hurt us the most are people we know. Even people we love. We live with the illusion that our inner circle will meet us and get us and others never will. But the truth is, we misunderstand everyone, including those who are close to us. Often the people who think they know us the best have only a version of ourselves that they take for our true self. It is rare to find someone in this life who sees all that we are, all the various contradictions, all the various things that don't make sense, that don't add up, all the things that make us who we are. It's my theory that there is a correlation between our fear of other people as strangers and our fear of meeting ourselves as strangers. We sense there may be a stranger in us, parts of ourselves unseen or unexpressed. I first heard the poem I read to you when I was living in New York City in my early 20s. It was read by John Kabat-Zinn, a meditation teacher, who was talking about the fruit of a daily meditation practice. At the time, I was a struggling actor, trying to make sense of my chaotic life, doing what I could to scrape by financially. I remember waking up every morning before a moving job I had and laying on my back, closing my eyes and feeling my breath on my belly. I started doing that every morning. The moving job was a temp job, a few weeks helping move books and supplies. It was monotonous work, putting books in boxes, taping them up, putting the box in a closet on repeat for eight hours a day. I found myself counting my breaths throughout the day just to keep myself alive <laughs> in what I was doing. I tried to feel where my breath was, noticing where it got shallow, where it got full, where I lost it, forgot about it. After a couple weeks of this, something incredible happened, something I had never consciously experienced before. I was sitting in the courtyard having my lunch, and I felt okay, just okay. It wasn't anything spectacular, but just a general feeling of being okay. I could feel the bench supporting me, the sun on my face. I could hear the birds chirping. And I felt completely satisfied for that moment. Again, it wasn't anything unusual, anything special. At the time, actually, I was experiencing things I had experienced thousands of times before. Eating, sitting, feeling sunshine. The difference was that I felt okay, that I felt satisfied. The feeling of satisfaction lasted for a few hours, and then I got back to my usual worry and preoccupation, an existential crisis that I was in the midst of. But I never forgot it. What does this have to do with feeling like a stranger? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it wasn't until years later, actually last year, that I realized that part of my amazement at that moment stemmed from the feeling that most of my daily living felt like a stranger to me. Yes, I had eaten, eaten thousands of times, 
Yes, I had sat. Yes, I felt sunshine. But I had rarely been present for it. Rarely did I feel satisfied with what was in front of me, around me. I was always looking elsewhere. This is how many of us treat ourselves, I think. We are looking elsewhere for a version of ourselves that we want to project or someday become, and we miss the life we're actually living, the person we actually are. We live as strangers to ourselves. There's an old Billy Joel song I like um, called The Stranger. I don't know if you've heard that one. It's about, he talks about wearing masks. And I love that part about wearing masks. I think this is part of our society. It's not a bad thing, necessarily. We all wear different masks, play different parts of ourselves to fulfill certain roles. This is why I loved being an, being an actor. I saw that intrinsic to being human is being a good actor. We can't avoid this. Where we get into trouble, I think, is when we forget that we're wearing a mask. We, we mistake the mask for the essence of who we are, who we are in the world. We become strangers to ourselves. It is necessary that we become strangers to ourselves. I've never met anyone who hasn't had this experience on some level. We wonder if we're being fully ourselves, if we've made the right decisions, if others really see who we are. When this confusion sets in, the door to curiosity has flung wide open. When we are certain about who we are, what we're about, what our life is, we become stagnant. We cover up our curiosity and replace it with false certainty. When we are sure about who we are, we become sure about who others are. We assume we know them even though they're strangers. We assume we know ourselves, even though deep down there is a stranger. It is not a failure to be strangers to ourselves. It's a gift. When we see ourselves as strangers, we have a brief chance to withhold our assumptions. Instead of being sure about who others are, we turn the question back on ourselves. Who am I? What am I about? Where am I in all of this? We take responsibility for our own strangeness, and it can lead us to kindness. We all know what it's like to be confused. <laughs> right? <laughs> We know what it's like to not know what we're doing. We know what it's like to wonder who we are and what this is all about. This is human. As we get older, I think it's tempting to grow more certain about who we are. But in my brief 31 years, the more I look, the more uncertain I am. Instead of feeling like I know myself and everyone experiences me as a stranger, I have seen when I look deeply, I still see a stranger. We seem to be more than the sum of our experiences, more than the sum of our stories, and most of us vaguely experience anything more than that. Our everyday experience is somehow removed from what we think we know, what we take for granted. All of, it, all of this takes just a little bit of investigation to realize that perhaps there is more going on inside us 
and around us, then we realize that we don't fully understand what is happening. I sense this has led to our current political climate. We deep down feel so uncertain about things that we took for granted that many crave certainty, even if it cuts us off from ourselves and other people. We want to be certain who is bad and who is good, and we crave easy answers to scary circumstances. We want to feel safe. We want to know what to do. We want to know what to expect. The truth is, we don't know what's going to happen. We can guess. We can listen to commentators. But we don't really know. We're living in a strange time. We are aware of this. And yet we try to figure it out anyway. <laughs> we make predictions. We obsessively read Facebook. <laughs> right? Come on. <laughs> we feel upset. We say, I'm never going to read Facebook again. And then we go back to Facebook. <laughs> the positive side of all this strangeness is we as a people in large numbers are seriously questioning how we want to live our lives. People are speculating. Let's say we are nearing the devastation of our planet. Let's say that the US government will not protect all citizens. Let's say that basic rights are denied. How do we want to live? How do we want to respond? These are worthwhile questions. How do we want to live? How do we want to respond? It's an invitation to meet the stranger. It's an invitation to meet the parts of ourselves perhaps we've never met before. Parts that are braver, more creative, and more loving than we could have ever imagined. Even though we fear the stranger, there is good within the strangeness if we have the willingness to stick with it and not turn away. There is good in this strange time. And I'm not saying that to be a Pollyanna or to overlook fear and injustice that is rampant. I am familiar with pain and injustice. And for many years, I thought that's all there was. That there was no real good that we could manifest out of it. I no longer believe that. Standing Rock was a reminder of this for me. I saw suffering and trauma. I saw injustice and brutality. I also saw love. Here at All Souls, we proclaim love beyond belief, yeah. right? We say that there is a love beyond what we believe about ourselves. There is a love beyond what we believe about our world. You could say this love is the stranger. The stranger that is waiting underneath all of our beliefs waiting to be met. It's waiting. It's waiting for us patiently. It's waiting to be discovered in this time, in our own lives. It's disguised in confusion, outrage, even, fe even fear. It uses these masks to get our attention and say, hey, I'm right here. Don't ignore me. This is a time that love will not be ignored. And so far, this is being proven true in mass numbers of people who are organizing 
and gathering, and maybe for the first time in their lives, realizing that, th that their life matters, yes. yeah. that their culture matters, mm -hmm. that their gender matters, mm -hmm. that they matter. Maybe they never knew this before. Maybe they knew it, they were taught it, but they never actually felt it. Their life didn't change overnight, but their view of their life did. We're seeing ourselves as Americans more fully, more completely. We're seeing who we are. We're seeing all our dirty laundry, all our pain. That's truth, right? And we're also seeing what matters to us. Push comes to shove. We're individually finding our way to navigate our life during this time. There's not one way to do that. There is no prescription or command or easy box to fit into. There's many different ways to engage this time as there are people in the world. The only invitation I offer this morning is make room for the stranger. This begins by making room for the stranger in yourself. The parts of yourself that need attention, that have been kicking and screaming, and that haven't been getting the attention it needs. Give it attention. I invite you to join me in this simple meditation if you'd like. It just takes a couple seconds. So get into a comfortable position. You can feel your feet on the ground. If you want, you can close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. And just repeat these few words after me. And then I'll read the poem again by Derek Walcott. So repeat these words silently to yourself. I know you. I know where you've been. I know what you've seen. I know what you've lost. I don't fully understand you. but I'm listening. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at each other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself, Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. <coughs> Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit. Feast on your life. Thank you all for that. Blessings to you. <laughs>